Welcome to this video on the definite integral. You'll learn a basic introduction and how to find the value of a definite integral if you can use a graphical approach. So we have looked at integrals before and typically we're looking at things like in the integral of x dx. This type of integral is called an indefinite integral or an antiderivative. So this is different than what we're going to look at now. What we're going to look at now is called a definite integral and you can tell a definite integral from an indefinite integral when we have um, little numbers on the upper and lower side of our integral sign. So maybe we say 1 to 3. So this, those two numbers there make it a definite integral as opposed to an indefinite integral. So to begin we're going to look at an example. So suppose we bought a stock at the beginning of the trading day for $15 per share. We'll just go with buying one share for now. In the first three hours of the day, the value of the stock was increasing by 25 cents each hour. What is the change in value over those first three hours? Okay, well, that, that's not hard. Each hour it rises by 25 cents per hour, so we can just take the 3 and times it by 0.25, and so we know that we're going to increase by 75 cents. And so the value of the stock after three hours is going to be our $15 that we started with plus the 75 cents and we end up with 15.75. Okay, pretty easy um, calculation there. So let's continue with example this example here. And the rate of change in our stock price, we are going to be um, denoting using this graph. So we just talked about the rate of change in that first three hours of the day. So it was rising by 25 cents per hour for those first three hours. So we can look here, and in those first three hours, we knew that it, it increased by 75 cents. The change in value over those first three hours was 75 cents. Now, notice here that if this function represents the rate of change in the stock price, see how it's 25 cents right here, just like we had in that example, and then we're talking about for three hours, and so the change in the value of the stock is the area here between the rate graph and that x-axis. So this area we found was 75 cents and that is the change in the stock price over those first three hours. So we have this connection here between the area trapped beneath the rate graph and the x-axis and the total change in our stock price over that time period. So let's continue here. Now for this second question, they're asking us what is the change in value over the next two hours? So we're looking at what's going on between 3 and 5. Now we don't have a constant rate of change as we did in those first three hours. Over here the, we had a constant rate of change of 25 cents per hour. Now our rate of change is decreasing. So our rate of change in our stock price is decreasing. One interesting question that you can ask yourself is does this mean that your actual stock price is decreasing? The temptation is to think that okay since I see this function that's going downhill this way that my stock price is also going to go downhill. But notice that our rate of change in for this whole region here is positive so that even though the rate of change is, is decreasing, our stock price is still increasing because the y value, which is the slope, is positive on all these places. Now if we use the same technique of finding the area trapped beneath the rate curve and that x-axis, that's going to give us the change in value over the next two hours. So let's see, can we find the area that I'm shading right here? What is the area of that? 
Well, in order to find that area, you, you could break it up into two different shapes, like a rectangle here and a tri triangle here. But another way to, to find that area is to remember that the area of a trapezoid, that's that shape, the area of that shape is one half our base times the sum of our heights. So this side here has height one, this side here has height two, and this is my base. So the change in value over that three to five is going to be one half. Our base here is that distance there, which is two times the sum of our two heights. So the height over here is 0.1. Even though it's two boxes, it's still 0.1. And our height over here on the left side is 0.25. So those two cancel each other out, and I end up with just 0.35. So over the next two hours between the third hour and the fifth hour, our stock price has increased another 35 cents. So we started out with 15. The first three hours we added 75 cents. The next two hours we added another 35 cents and we have a new stock price of $16.10. So now let's look at what's going on during the last three hours of the day. So in these last three hours of the day, our stock price looks like it's increasing at a constant 10 cents per hour. So we've got three hours. We have a, a rectangular shape here. And we've got three hours, a constant increase of 10 cents per hour. And so we're increasing by another 30 cents. So now we start out at the fifth hour, that was we were at 16.10, remember, add another 30 cents, and we're now at $16.40. So the stock price at the end of the day is $16.40. So we gained over the whole day $1.40. Now, remember that if we didn't know that we were starting with a stock price of $15, all we would know from this data here is the change in the value. So the what that definite integral tells us is that the change in the value between 0 and 8 equals the area between the rate curve and the x-axis. And in this case, that area is $1.40. So our change in the value over those th eight hours is $1.40. Now, what we have just found is we've found the definite integral of our rate curve, which is our rate of change in our stock price, over between 0 and 8, those 8 hours that the stock market is open, and we came up with a value of $1.40. So once again, we've got these key relationships. The area between the x-axis and that rate curve equals the change in total value. So the, we, we don't necessarily know what the, the final value is. We just know what the change in value is. And the notation that we use is this definite integral. It looks just like the integral, but we've got those limits above and below that integral sign. And we have our rate curve in here, dx. OK, so this time I've given you a slightly different look to our rate of change in our stock price. So suppose that we're, we've got the same situation. Maybe we purchased the stock at a um, value of $15 per share, per share. And then this is what happens as the day goes on. So, so this shape up here looks pretty similar to our initial one, as does this one, except for we have a triangular shape instead of a 
trapezoidal shape. Um, one thing to notice here is in this region here, our rate of change is zero. So that means between the fourth and fifth hour, our stock price is remaining constant. It remains the same. Over here, our rate of change is negative. So in this area, our rate of change of our curve is less than zero. So that means our stock price is actually decreasing. So all over here, our stock price is decreasing. So you're going to end up with a negative area in this region. And that negative area represents a decrease in the stock price. Because remember, the area between the rate graph and that x-axis represents the change in value. So even though we're not used to thinking of having negative areas, in this case, a negative area represents a decrease in value, which is certainly possible, especially when we're talking about stocks. So take a minute and see if you can at least fill out, actually see if you can figure out these first three values. Once you do, unpause the video, and then we'll do these last three together. So did you get these first three values? So we had 0.4, area is base, that's 2 times height, which is 2. And so we have 0.4 is our change in value over those first two hours. The second shape is a triangular shape, and so we're going to take 1 half base times height. So 1 half, our base is 2, our height is 0.2, and we end up with 0.2. This one's a little tricky, but remember we talked about how in this, between 4 and 5, our stock price is remaining the same because our rate of change is zero. So there's no change in our stock price. So now let's look at these last three hours. So between 5 and 6, our shape is a triangle again, so we're going to have 1 half. Our base is 1. And our height this time is negative 0.1. So we're going to have negative 0 0.05. So this means that between 5 and 6, our stock price lost 5 cents. Okay, let's do between 6 and 7. So between 6 and 7, we've got a square. So we have, so I have a base, which is 1, and a height, which is negative 0.1. So our stock price lost another 10 cents. And in the last hour, this one we actually already did. We calculated this before. It's the same as this hour here. So it's 1 half times 1 times negative 0.1, which is negative 0 0.05. So the total change in value over the whole day is the sum of all these different changes. So we're going to have 0.4 plus 0.2 plus 0 plus negative 0 0.05 plus negative 0 0.10 plus negative 0 0.05. And so this gives us 0.4. So that means over the entire day our stock price increased by 40 cents per share.